world's first fluorescent frog discovered. Researchers in Argentina have discovered the world's first fluorescent frog while studying the pigment of South American polka dot tree frogs. The world's first fluorescent frog was found in the jungles near Santa Fe, Argentina. The frog's fluorescent glow is only visible to humans when it is placed under ultraviolet light. The frog, like other biofluorescent organisms, can absorb light at short wavelengths and re-emit the light at longer wavelengths, creating the fluorescence. Researchers suspect the frogs use their fluorescence to improve visual perception, as it can make them 30% brighter during twilight and 19% brighter on a night with a full moon. Other land animals that are known for their fluorescence capabilities include parrots and some species of scorpions. Coral in shallow water emit fluorescence as a sunblock to protect themselves and the symbiotic algae inside them from sunburn. In deep sea coral, the fluorescence helps provide a light source for the algae to carry out photosynthesis. Last year, a fluorescent species of polyps was found in the Red Sea. It's suspected that the sea creatures use this ability to attract prey. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Keep watching for more amazing world firsts. Baby born using controversial new fertility technique. Thanks to a team from the New Hope Fertility Center in New York, the world now has its first three-person baby. A five-month-old baby was conceived via a new method that uses his birth parent's DNA along with that of a second woman. The technique was used to avoid passing on the mother's mitochondrial genes, which carried a fatal genetic disorder. Called spindle nuclear transfer, the procedure involved replacing the nucleus of the donor egg with that of the mother's. The resulting hybrid, an egg with the mother's nuclear DNA and the donor's mitochondrial DNA, is then fertilized by the father's sperm. Five embryos were created using the procedure, but only one developed normally. It was implanted in the mother's uterus, and the baby was born nine months later. The controversial method has not been approved in the U.S., so the team traveled to Mexico to get the procedure done there. The boy remains healthy. His genes carry less than 1% of his mother's mutation, which doctors believe is too low to cause any problems. Scientists confirm world's first pair of identical twin puppies. Identical twins are a pretty rare occurrence in humans, but if you think that's rare, consider that the world has never knowingly seen a set of identical puppies born, until now. A veterinarian in South Africa made the discovery as he was performing a c-section on an Irish wolfhound. The pregnant pooch was giving birth to a litter of seven, but unlike most canine pregnancies, this one produced an unprecedented irregularity. While there were seven puppies, there were only six placentas. Two of the dogs were sharing one. Inside, each of the two little guys had an umbilical cord hooked up to their shared placenta for them to receive nourishment from their mother. When the vet looked at both male puppies once born, it appeared they were indeed identical twins. Tests in their early stages confirmed as such, which provided the green light needed for the scientific community to declare the pups Cullen and Romulus, the first monozygotic twins the world has ever been able to confirm, as published in the journal Reproduction in Domestic Animals on August 22nd. Now, the genetic occurrence of twinning extends to at least three species on Earth that we know of, dogs, humans, and the nine-banded armadillo. Baltimore boy gets world's first double hand transplant. An eight-year-old Baltimore boy who lost his hands to a serious infection when he was a toddler has become the world's youngest double hand transplant recipient. Zion Harvey, an eight-year-old boy whose hands were amputated, has successfully received a pair of new hands. Surgeons first connected Zion's forearm bones to the donated hands with steel plates and screws. Then they use microvascular surgical techniques to connect the arteries and veins. Once blood started circulating, muscles and tendons were repaired and rejoined one by one. Nerves were then reattached before the surgery was finished. Zion is expected to recover in hospital for several weeks and will still need to attend months of therapy sessions. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Doctor planning world's first head transplant admits he doesn't know how to do it. 
An Italian neuroscientist who claimed he could transplant a human head to a donor body admitted he actually did not know how to perform a head transplant, and asked for help from America during a rambling presentation before a conference of surgeons on Friday. Sergio Canavero gave his presentation at the American Academy of Neurological and Orthopaedic Surgeons and International College of Surgeons, at which the man who was volunteered to have his head transplanted by Canavero, Russian computer scientist Valery Spiridonov, was present. Spiridonov suffers from a rare genetic muscle-wasting disease and says he wants to have the chance of a new body before he dies. Canavero's plan, as detailed in the online journal Surgical Neurology International, is to cool Spiridonov's head to help the brain survive when it is removed from its blood supply. The head's blood vessels would be cut and attached to tubes connected to the donor body. The spinal cord would then be cut with an ultra-sharp nanoblade that would sever the nerve fibers without crushing them. The tubes would then be removed and the blood vessels in Spiridonov's head connected to those of the donor body. Finally, polyethylene glycol would be used to fuse the two ends of the spinal cords together. Spiridonov would spend the next three to four weeks in an artificial coma for his head and his new body to heal. Canavero claims his patient would be able to walk within a year. During his rambling two and a half hour presentation on Friday, according to NBC News, Canavero compared himself to Dr. Frankenstein and asked his audience to suspend all judgment. It was only during the last 10 minutes that he admitted that he did not know how to perform a head transplant. He failed to explain how he could quickly re-establish blood supply to his patient's brain, which can only survive for a few minutes without blood. Nor did he say how he would awaken his patient from a coma. Spiridonov, who watched the proceedings from a mobilized wheelchair, looked confused, NBC reported. Canavero suggested getting a billionaire to fund his experiment. I am asking you, Americans, to make your contribution, he said. I have a detailed plan to do it.